What's up guys? So today I am back with my mom and we are doing another video. This one's a little bit more exciting for me because I'm super pumped about traveling right now. I'm not really going anywhere, but I just love traveling. If you could see my room, you would know why and you would understand. I just love to travel. I've grown up on traveling and I want to start making more travel videos on this channel. So hopefully you guys are into that. But this video today is going to be more advanced travel tips. I feel like a lot of beauty gurus and just travel people out in the world do a lot of videos about more basic travel tips, kind of like call your bank before you leave, how to pack for your flight, and if you guys want to see one of those videos too, I can do one of those later, but this one's going to be some more advanced travel tips that you can't really find on Pinterest very easily, and they're kind of, I think, less well known, and hopefully they can help once you've got all the basics down. So we're just gonna go through and tell you guys some of our best travel tips that we've come up with throughout the years. Well, first of all, keeping in mind that packing light is a huge factor in traveling well. And sometimes packing light is difficult to do if you still want to have, you know, outfits and makeup and things like that but I think you can do both of those things. If you go to Sephora or other beauty places like that sometimes they'll offer little samples. You can get little samples of moisturizers or makeup or whatever it's in the tiny free. size. And you it, just yeah, they're free. For, yeah, you, just, you can ask for I think like any foundation or moisturizer or primer or anything for free and they'll give you a little sample of it which is perfect for traveling and you can try out a new product. <laughs> Another tip that I have is kind of two tips in one. My first tip is to split up your money. I don't ever think that it's really smart to keep all of your money in one place because if you lose that or if it gets stolen, then you're kind of out of luck. So I know that Rick Steves and a lot of travel experts say to carry a money belt, especially if you're going to Europe or South America or anywhere where it's kind of, I don't know, a little bit more dangerous, I guess, or pickpockets are kind of more prevalent. But I, I've never used a money belt and I've never been pickpocketed. Side note, we have some pickpocket stories. I have two that I'm thinking of in my mind. So if you guys would ever want to see a video on pickpockets and tips, like see my stories of pickpockets and also tips on how to avoid them and how to protect yourself from pickpockets, then I can do one of those too. So yeah, I think it's really smart to, if you're checking luggage, maybe put some money in there, some money in your carry-on, and always keep some on your person, like in your purse or in your backpack, but kind of keep it really hidden. So if it's in your backpack, that's on your back. You can't always see your back. So keep it really down far deep, not on the outside pocket. And a really good way, this is part two of the tip, to hide some money is this fun invention that I found online, which I never would have thought of. This is a simple chapstick tube. Once you've used up a whole chapstick tube, you can clean it out, clean out. I just used some tweezers to clear out the excess chapstick in there and stick some money in there. And we just put a $20 bill in here for the sake of the video, but you could put a hundred or just like that can be like your emergency cash stash if everything else you own gets stolen. At least you have this. And that would be something you would probably want to keep like in your pocket or just like right on your person. Because if it's in your backpack and it gets stolen with everything else, then it's Okay, so I always carry one of these as a mom, I don't know if it's just a mom thing or whatever. Back I've learned it from her, so it's right. not just a mom thing. One of these packs of Kleenexes can be used for anything under the sun. Obviously, a tissue, um, toilet paper when in need. Uh, you can split these up into two. They're a two-layer kind of thing. You can split it into two. Use it for little blotters for your if makeup. You have oil on your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any multitude of things. Or uh, just like a wiping, spill. Yeah, wiping a table if you're going to sit down and eat somewhere or just any multitude. I, I cannot stress enough how often people don't want to carry these, but they turn to me because they want them. So <laughs> Kleenex, must have. All right, another fun one. This is kind of something that our family just does, and I don't really know of anyone else who does it. I'm sure there's other people in the world somewhere, but I've never met any of them. But we will cut up a book, and I know this kind of sounds like sacrilegious to books, but trust me, I'm one of the biggest book lovers out there, and it's still a great way to do it. 
when you're traveling and you want something lightweight. We have a novel here. This is Diana Gabaldon's Outlander. Must like read. Here. Yeah, if you haven't read this, read it. But <laughs> it's it's freaking huge. It's like a thousand pages or something. And 850, close to a thousand. And you're not going to want to take something this bulky and also heavy in a backpack or, I mean, you could and most people probably would, but if you know you're not going to read the whole 850 page book when you're on a week long vacation, you can cut it into pieces and take one of the pieces with you. So we sliced it into like 350 pages here. We also did the same thing with Rick Steve's travel guides, which are really great. This is the next tri tip we're going to talk about, but if you have like, this is the best of Europe. So it has a lot of different countries in here, but saying you're, say you're only going to three of those countries, you don't want to take the whole book if you're not even going to Germany or Italy and you're only going to the Netherlands and France. So you cut out the sections that have the Netherlands and France in them and then take those sections and leave the big old hunk of book that you don't need back at home. You can also tape the ends up and the front and covers um, up to keep them together so that they don't start falling apart. If you have a book that starts this thick, it is kind of tricky. You have to open it up and you can use an X-Acto knife or a box cutter or whatever and you just kind of slice the pages out that you need and then make sure that you just t tape them up well with book uh, with binding tape or packing tape. Just tab the areas that you want to use, label them with the different countries or cities or whatever it is. It's so beneficial. <laughs> is just using Rick Steves. Um, travel guides in general are super helpful because they're really detailed, but our favorite has always been Rick Steves. He knows exactly what he's talking about and he knows everything about everything. Detailed information about like every little thing down to pickpockets in certain countries and exactly where they are, like what metro lines they're on, and um, little hole-in-the-wall restaurants that are cheap but delicious and loved by locals and really good hotels that are also like cheap. He just has really good money saving tips, but also like get in everything that you want to see in the city and don't miss anything. He's very good about putting it in different categories. So he'll rate all the different um, sightseeing areas, you know, as he'll, must sees or if you have extra time. He also divvies it up into like, if you're a young group of kids, like my age and you want to go like clubbing at night, he'll have some recommendations for that. Mm -hmm. Whereas like if you're a little bit older and you don't want to go clubbing, but you want to go like see the town at night, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily want to go to clubs, he has like all of it just laid out really nicely. So I always recommend Rick Steves. The next tip that I have is if you're going to a foreign country, if you're from America or England too, because I figured this out while I was studying abroad in England, if you are from one of these countries and you're used to tampons that have a plastic applicator or even a cardboard applicator, any sort of applicator at all, and you go to Greece or Italy or lots of places probably in Asia, there's just lots of places in the world that don't sell tampons with an applicator and you literally just have to like put it in yourself and they're not my favorite tampons in the world. I really don't like using them. If you know that you're gonna be on your period when you're going to a certain place and you know that that place doesn't have tampons with applicators, then pack a few with you. Come and, then, home. and then when you come back, you have that extra space in your suitcase that was full of tampons and now you can put a souvenir in there. Along those lines, <laughs> I would think that it's important to be aware that just being, uh, expect the unexpected because yeah. some places won't have toilets like you're used to, some or, places or won't have... the food that you're used to or whatever. They grew up with their crazy mom making schedules like this, um, an itinerary, and I just really love having the information by date, um, activities that we're going to do, and the last column is always a lodging column. It has confirmation numbers on it, reservation numbers, train times, um, I just think that it's really useful to have a hard copy of something because if you're relying constantly on your phone for your emails or to have your confirmation numbers, you don't know when you're not going to get Wi-Fi in a certain place and you can't 
access something, you don't know if your phone's gonna get stolen, and then you have literally nothing. That happened to my friend when we were studying abroad in England. The first week we were there, her phone got stolen, and she didn't have a phone the rest of the time. So I always think that it's handy to have these, I'm, I'm, <laughs> to have these hard copy itineraries because you can physically alter them as you go. If you wanna change things around, you can check stuff off and you're done with it. Like she said, you can have all your confirmation numbers down and that way when you're at a hotel or a train or whatever, you just like pull out your paper and you have everything right here with all of your times on it. You have like ideas of what to do and you can make them themed for your location. So these ones are all from England. So it has the red and blue, like the flag. The same goes for city maps. I think that having a hard copy city map is really useful too. Um, those a lot of the time come in the Rick Steves book, so if you have those, then you, then you double-edged, what is it called, double-edged sword? Then you, best of both worlds, it, it, two birds with one stone. <laughs> <laughs> Hard copy itinerary is something that I would stress. <laughs> and our last tip for this video is going to be about toiletries. And I have realized over the years of flying and things getting pressurized up in the air that lots of times things will explode and then you get back into your bag and it's everywhere and I've actually been pretty good like ever since I started traveling when I was really young everyone always told me to put them in plastic bags so that's not the tip the tip is to use as much as possible something with a screw-on lid instead of a flip lid because those ones are more likely to explode whereas a screw on is pretty dang solid. This is just an example but this is the Boots Extracts Brazil Nut Body Butter and it's a mini size so this is 50 milliliters and 1.69 fluid ounces so you can use this um, as a carry-on like anything under 100 milliliters or 3 ounces can be used as a carry-on. So anything that has a screw on lid I think is really good and it won't leak and you can also reuse these things. Oh my gosh, it's like... Did I put it on too tight? Oh, I did it. Oh. Okay, there we go. Um, you can reuse these. So this, for example, is a body butter, and once I'm done with it, I can put just any lotion or body butter in here to take travel. You can even, you know, wash it out and use it for jewelry or anything. I mean, yeah, it can be, the screw-ons can be used for anything. Yeah, the screw-ons for liquids in general are really useful because they're the least likely to leak of anything. All right, so that is gonna be all of our advanced travel tips for this video. If you guys ever wanna see more travel tips that we can think of some more, then we will do that for you guys. But I hope this has been helpful. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe if you're not already subscribed for more videos like this. And I will see you guys with another one really soon. Do you wanna say bye? Bye.